What's up guys? Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. My name is David. Lick Branch Farms is a four season market farm loaded in Richmond County, which is in South Central North Carolina. We grow specifically to go to farmer market and we do sell here at our home farm stand or from our farm. If this is your first time visiting our channel, we want you to feel welcome. This channel is about market farming and gardening in general. And you'll probably find some useful information. If not, you'll find some good entertainment, I can assure you. We've always got something going on around here. So, in the last video that we did, we got the high tunnel clean out. We pulled all of the old peppers, all the old tomatoes, all that stuff out of there. And we left one row of cucumbers. And it's not doing well, but we're going to let it ride. But let me get away from this fan. So, you can see right here, we got everything cleaned up. And we also sprayed some BT to kill off some army worms that we found. And so far, it looks like that was pretty effective because I haven't seen any worms in here. I haven't seen anything. I scratched around a little bit with the yard rake to try to level this row out a little bit, and I still didn't see anything. So I think that was pretty effective. But yeah, it's like October. I think today's October the 3rd. So we've got some BHM 589s that we're going to plant in here for fall. Now, don't get it twisted. This is not going to be one of those things where it's not heated and all that stuff. No, this tunnel will be heated. It's going to be kind of climate controlled, and we are going to see just how far we can push our tomato production into the year now during or during the winter time here what i call fall winter we don't see a lot of cold cold weather up until january or so um our winters our fall and winters is generally high 40s for lows and mid to upper 60s for highs and i mean that's 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 really good growing weather that's good gardening weather and when you you know multiply that with a tunnel you got you I mean you got the best of both worlds so yeah these are bhm 589s and i got enough to do probably four rows i don't think i got quite enough to do five but i know i got enough to do four and they're already blooming look these guys already got bloom going and i have grown bhm 589s before i grew them in this year in this tunnel in that row back in the spring i planted them on march the first and i think we were still late april early may before we were harvesting tomatoes but when we did get a harvest of tomatoes man it was outstanding it, we were we loaded buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of tomatoes out for that one row so you know we're gonna head your bets and see if we can't do the same thing for the fall but we're gonna try to do it in four rows now like i said i got a hundred fifty thousand btu heater that we were going to put in here and i just got the unistrut put up the other day and i think i got some pictures of it when i was pulling the plastic back to mount these things and you can see them up there they should be plenty to support a 168 pound heater so yeah we got that dude coming in here hopefully over the weekend i'll get that put in here and then we're going to be worried about getting thermostats and all that hooked up but first we're going to get started on this row and i don't know that i'm going to finish it today because the sun's going down you can see but i am going to get started moving this compost in here and we'll start laying this road out so if i don't finish this video today we'll pick it back up tomorrow and we'll get some tomatoes put in the ground between now and tomorrow i promise you now i did want to mention that i just got this load of compost delivered today you can see it this is organic compost and i get it from nc landscape supply out of aberdeen and i also got a load of mushroom compost from them earlier in the year but you know i got to looking back on the rows that i did with mushroom compost and the rows that i did with just the regular organic compost the rows that I did with mushroom compost, that's where my pigweed problems are. So I've kind of narrowed that down and I'm not buying any more mushroom compost just for that reason. Because guys, if you don't, if you've never had to deal with it, if you get pigweed, it is terrible to try to get rid of. It is all it is crazy how fast that stuff can multiply. So we're hoping to, you know, get away from the weed problem, the pigweed problem, by not using mushroom compost because all of this compost that we use for this lettuce every bit you see here is just regular old you know organic compost and we don't have pigweed in those rows but the ones on the other side we do all right so there's nothing really crazy you know exciting about what i'm getting ready to do all i'm doing is taking the tractor scooping up a bucket full putting the wheelbarrow up under filling the wheelbarrow ragging it flat because this thing is raggedy it's old as methuselah and it's liable to fall apart in the middle of me using it but we're going to wheel it in there one load at a time until we fill this row up and you'll see that it doesn't take very much to make a row um i think i had it down to eight wheelbarrow fools will do a 50 foot row and you're gonna say god that's a lot and it really is to an extent but that's all we've ever used in these roads is compost no matter how far you dig down in there 
that's what you're going to see and see that's what we continually want to put on here so we've got a good base for everything we decide to plant now it's going to take more than compost to feed these plants that we're planting we already know that because one we're going into fall where the weather's going to cool off and our soil biology is going to slow down that means you know anything we use as far as organic fertilizer isn't going to work as fast if it works at all because the you know people misinterpret how organic fertilizers work the plant cannot utilize that fertilizer until the soil has done its part the soil and the microbes have to break that down and make it readily available for the plant to uptake that's how organic fertilizers work now you can get things that the plant can readily use like chilean nitrate and you know you can get you can fix your nitrogen problem with that but you know if you want to keep he healthy living soil you need to feed it organic matter and you need to give that soil something to feed on now during the cool cold season it slows down a lot to the point to where you know you don't really get a whole lot of activity out of it now we're hoping inside this tunnel this ground temperature will stay you know a little bit warmer than you know normal and that'll help us out there so what we're going to do is we're going to put a load of compost on top of this maybe two inches thick and then we're going to mend that with an organic fertilizer and i got a new uh fertilizer from a new supplier and i want to show you what that is here in just a little bit once i get ready to put it on here and you're going to be surprised at the name of it all right guys so i'm going to kind of give you a shot of what i got going on so this is like several different piles of compost and what i'm going to do is just take a regular old rake a regular old fan rake and i'm going to put this camera down first and kind of rake and level this stuff out now like i said we want at least about a two inch layer of this stuff and that just you know kind of makes it a little bit uh equal when it comes to how much nutrients we're putting back into it so yeah i'm gonna put this thing down and try to rake some of this out level to give me an idea of what it's gonna look like when i get done but you know it normally comes out pretty even once we get uh, all of the beds put or excuse me all of the rows put together All right, guys, so that's the start of a flipped 30 inch bed. That's pretty much how I flip them. Take rake all the high size down to the old mulch, put a little about a two inch layer on the uh, new mulch on top of it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take some amendments, put on top of that, and rake that in. And then that will be the base for our new plant team. So I'm going to get another wheelbarrow full and try to get at least the mulch and the amendments put down today. Sun's going down. And then tomorrow we'll plant tomatoes. Alright guys, so we got that row put in. That is all compost. It's a little thicker on this side than it is on that one just because of the level. But we're gonna get these amendments put on it and rake that in, and then we'll get the drip lines pulled out. When we may get some tomatoes planted or not. Um, I'll turn the water on and we'll just plant beside a drip tape. And we should be able to get 50, 52 plants in that row. But I'm gonna give you a shot of the new amendments that we're gonna start using. And I seen this on another channel and it comes from seven springs farm supply and it says it's packaged bag by mountain gate organics and that's in harrisburg harrisonburg virginia but this is never sink blend and i know you guys know about never sink farms that's connor creek more up in upstate new york that specific blend is a six one 
seven i think that's what it is but it's all organic it's feather meal fish meal kelp biochar and blood meal or something else anyway it's all organic so normally when i use garden tone i mix up four to five pounds per 50 foot bed and i think i'm gonna stick with the same ratio for this i'm gonna put five pounds on this bed of that and then i'm gonna go back with another five pounds of alfalfa meal and rake that in and that's all the amendments we'll put on that bed now we will use fertigation through the drip tape but that'll be after we start putting on fruit All right, guys, so the sun's going down on us. You can see it up there on the other side of the house. We're going to get these tomatoes put in today because, like I said, I got lights in here. I can turn on. But I've got the plants laid out on that side of the drip tape. And if you watch me plant tomatoes in here in the past, you know that I do them on a double row, which is like 51, 52 plants per row. And we do them on a two-foot spacing. And that's exactly what these are right here. And I'm going to go down beside that drip tape, every one of these plants. We've already amended it so we don't have to put any pre-plant fertilizer or anything like that in. We're going to dibble right beside that emitter and we're going to put that plant in the ground. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. And that one is done. So we're going to go down through this row. I'm going to get shots of a little bit of it. But these are determinate plants. The BHM589 is a determinate tomato plant and they will be trellis. We'll be running uh, baling string all the way down through here holding these guys up and they're going to get full so we're going to have to put posts like every three plants to keep them supported but i'm gonna get down through here and get these things planted real quick because i still got another row of these to put in before this row is finished All right, guys, so it's getting a little late. You see I done turned the lights on, and the sun is gone. It's getting dark. All my irrigation is done kicked on, so about time to wrap this up. But I'm going to go down through here, and I'm going to give you a shot of what everything looks like right now. And they look a little wonky, but give them a day or two. They're going to straighten right up. Um, I feel pretty good about this planting. All the plants that I put in the ground here, they were real healthy. Um, I did pull some of the bottom leaves off, and I didn't go through the extreme of planting them deep and all that stuff. I mean, these guys are going to be trellis, and, you know, they're going to be actually on a Florida weave trellis, so they're not going to fall over anything. They're kind of top heavy right now, but after a day or two, they'll stand straight up, and once that happens, we'll get the, uh, the Florida weave put on. You see, I still got these two posts here. I have to put posts in between, like, every third plant, and then down at the end, and we'll run strings down through there, and we'll go ahead and get these guys supported. But anyway, when you guys come back during the next video, all of these rows will be planted with something and we will be working on this heater that's what we're going to work on in the next video and probably that tunnel over here so if you missed the video whenever we planted bhn 589 tomatoes in this row back march the first of this year i'm going to put a link to it up here and if you have not subscribed to our channel reach over here in this right hand corner and click that subscribe button as always guys we appreciate you stopping by we thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one